So, let us uh, discuss each of these uh, queries and solutions. If you have uh, proposed alternative solutions, uh, let us know. There are uh, more than one solution for most of these. So, take the first one. Select, oops, um, this is the solution. Where is the, no, that is not what I intended. Yeah, the solutions are available. Are they uh, visible? Yeah. Okay. Just now they have been made uh, visible. So, you can uh, see it on your laptop also, but I suggest you focus on the current thing we are seeing over here that because there will be interesting discussions. <coughs> so, the first one is very easy, uh, trivial I suppose everyone would have got that. Um, select name from instructor. So, let us skip that. Now, let us look at the second one. Find the course ID and titles of all courses taught by an instructor named Srinivasan. So, how do you write a query in general? It is good to keep the schema in front of you whenever you are writing queries, so that you know what attributes are in what table. If you are use the schema a lot, sure you know everything, but since these schemas are new to you, uh, it is worth keeping the schema diagram in front of you. If you um, want to right now also you may find it useful to keep the schema diagram, which is in uh, chapter 2 of the slides. If you have written it down, that is fine, but keep it with you to understand what is going on. Okay, if people are ready, uh, this one says uh, course ID and titles of all courses taught by an instructor named Srinivasan. So, what are the relevant tables here? Obviously, course ID and title come from the course table. The other part, who has uh, or rather which courses has Srinivasan taught, how do you get that? The name Srinivasan would appear in which table, that is one of the, we are collecting what all tables we need to answer this query. The name is only going to be in the instructor table, the course ID is in the course table. Now, how do you know what courses Srinivasan taught? we have the teachers table. So, we have to join these tables. Do you need any other tables to complete it? No, because uh, teachers has the instructor ID of the instructor who taught it uh, and it also has the course ID of the corresponding course. So, we could join course uh, instructor and teachers. So, supposing we do natural join. So, we have course natural join teachers natural join instructor. And if you run this query, it will more or less work. You can write this in SQL. How do you write it in SQL? Select um, course ID comma title from course natural join teachers natural join instructor. There is one small glitch though, which you have to watch out for whenever you use natural joins. Natural joins are going to equate any columns with the same name and you can get into trouble if you use natural join uh, with unintended department name and credits. And if you see instructor, there is ID, name, department name and salary. If you do this natural join, what is going to happen? The department names will be equated. So, what would the query actually give? It will give you course ID and titles of all courses taught by Srinivasan, which are in the same department as Srinivasan's department. But there is nothing in our schema which says Srinivasan from computer science cannot go and teach a course in uh, mechanical engineering, but you will lose all those courses if you just did a join. Okay. Yes, uh, all of us have made this. Uh, I, I made the same mistake the first time I wrote many of these. Uh, Let us hope that the TAs who did this uh, have done it right and in fact, they have by the simple expedient of not using natural joints. It is safer not to use natural joints. Uh, there is a um, inner join using clause, join using which is safe where you specify exactly which columns you want equated, that is safe. Okay. So, this uh, query here 
is joining the usual teachers instructor course, but the join attributes are carefully listed. Instructor dot ID is teachers dot ID, course dot course ID is teachers dot course ID, and instructor name is Srinivasan. Okay, now let's look at this query. Let's understand what it means first of all. <coughs> ID and names of instructors who have taught a course in the computer science department, even if they are themselves not from the computer science department. So what we need is actually courses in the computer science department and instructor ID and name. And how do you link these up? Again, teachers. It's in fact basically the same query, except the selection condition changes and the output changes. Um, so <coughs> this is identical, except. So now you will see that teachers instructor course, this part is identical and course dot department name is ComSci, that is all we care about. We do not care which department the instructor was from and selector, select instructor ID and name. I, I think even instructor dot is redundant here, ID only. Okay. The next query, find IDs of instructors who have never taught a course. So how do you do this? How do you find someone who has not ever taught a course? Yeah. So you can use not in or not exist. Except. Or except. Except. So there are several different ways of writing it. So if you use the except way, what you will do is find instructors who have taught a course and find all instructors. So all instructors except instructors who have taught a course. That is one way of writing it. Or you will say instructors where not exists course taught by that particular instructor. Uh, we will see this here. I think that the solution here is this one. Uh, so this one is the not in version. You can also write it with not exist. So this one is probably the easiest version. Select ID from in um, instead of where ID not in. Yes. This Except is one set and that is another ID. set. That this is minus another set. That's all. Yes. set minus set. Yeah. Or if you use uh, not exist, you can say where not exists, select ID, uh, sorry, select star from teachers, where teachers dot ID equal to instructor dot ID. That is yet another solution. Uh, I hope people have given these different solutions. We can put them together as the, no, no, it cannot be teachers, uh, takes, I am sorry. This should be a section. It should be a section. section. This is a mistake. Teachers, no? I think teachers. No, teachers. Section, hmm? Which courses which are offered. We are not saying if anyone needs to teach it or not. It is possible for a course to be offered as a section without an associated teacher, although that is probably a bad idea. <laughs> it, the schema allows it. And since the English query said uh, courses which are offered, we should be using the section relation, not the teachers, teachers. relation. In fact, this query uh, solution used the takes relation, which is even worse, because it only includes courses which are actually taken by some student. We do have courses which are offered and nobody takes it. It, it does happen occasionally. Not, not often, but it can happen. Hmm? Yeah, we can probably, um, again, if we use intersect, there is no need even for distinct because intersect removes uh, duplicates anyway. So intersect is probably the cleanest way of writing this. Oops, what happened? Now the next one was find the ID and title of all courses which do not require any prerequisites. So how do we do this? We have to make sure that this course does not exist in the prerequisite table 
as the first one, the one which requires a prerequisite. It can be a prerequisite for some course, we do not care, but it should not have a prerequisite. So, again a not in or not exist query is the simplest way, but you could also do it using except. Except. So, essentially identical to this query, uh, to the previous query rather. So, select course ID title from course, where course ID not in select course ID from prereq. Prereq ID is the ID of the course which is a prerequisite. We are of course assuming that we do not have entries like course ID null in prereq that should not be there. In fact, it cannot be there because we have declared uh, co course ID comma prereq ID as the primary key for prereq. So, there will be no null values there anyway. Okay. The last one is students who have not taken any biology department courses. Again, we can use the same kind of structure uh, as the previous queries. So, we can uh, make sure that that ID is not in takes where uh, takes join with course because we need a department name biology. Uh, so, so, the solution is I think solution is not giving that what that is that is the solution wrong. is totally wrong totally wrong I, I apologize for not looking at the solutions and yes uh, I have given select a distinct name um, so one minute what is the query what did it want names of students we are not taken yeah there is no need for distinct even so just select name from student where id uh, we could do it either as id not in or let us do the other one where not exists so we have to take uh, join uh, takes and course because takes has the course id but it doesn't have the department id where takes dot course id equals course dot course id and a course dot department name equals and now, this is the part, we have not yet put any constraint on who is the student here in the sub query. So, we want it for the outer student. So, takes dot id equals student dot id and that ends the sub query and the rest goes. Okay. So, again as discussed, we can do it using an except the same way. So, we have all students except students who have taken a biology one. that will simply be a join again or we can use not in all, all the forms are equivalent. So, we have done uh, have we, I think we have done two of those forms we have the exists and we have the not exists and we have the not in the except is the one form we have not illustrated. Okay. So, there is a railway DDL. Um, so, here we have the following queries find the names of all trains which have a stop at Thane. So, what is the schema? Mm. Yeah. So, back to the schema we have a train halt, station, train, and track. So, uh, we want to the query was uh, find things which names of trains which have a stop at Thani. So, that <coughs> we can use from the train halts um, and the station code, but the name is Thani. So, we have to use the station relation and equate the name to Thani and then join this with train halts on station code and make sure it actually halts at Thani, it does not just go through it and what is the condition? 
it halts if the <coughs> time n is not equal to time out. If it is then it may we have uh, this is just another way of writing that query. Um, we could have okay, so I wanted the name of the train I guess. <coughs> so, we had to join with train also. The train halts only gives us the id of the train. So, if you want the name um, we have to join with train and train id equal to train halts dot id train halts dot station code instead of joining this particular version has used a sub query, but that is not really required. We could have equally well just done a join that is probably simpler. In general uh, it is better to use a join than to use a sub query. Why? Why is it better to use a join than a sub query? If it if the sub query helps to understand what is going on more clearly then that is fine. But if it could have been easily changed into a join, the issue is that many database systems uh, like in particular PostgreSQL or MySQL for that matter are not very good at optimizing sub queries. So, if you run uh, queries with a sub query on a very large relation, they may actually choose a bad plan. Whereas, if you use a join, they are going to get a much better plan. Now, it is possible for a good optimizer to say that this query is really equivalent to the join query and it can convert it and <coughs> good optimizers actually do that. But the optimizers in PostgreSQL and MySQL, they are uh, they do a good job of join optimization, but with sub queries they do not do such a great job. So, do not use it unnecessarily for no good reason. Whereas, we have not in, then there is a slightly better reason. Again, except could have would probably guarantee a better solution, uh, but sometimes not in is easier to read. So, if you are uh, one to one option is first write the query with not in or and check out the performance. If the performance turns out to be bad, then you can look at how to rewrite the query using except for example. Okay, let us uh, do that before that. Uh, what is it? Time underscore in time in. Okay. Okay, now, coming back names of all stations which are 20 kilometers from Mumbai. Now, how the hell do you do this? What do we have here? We have station, um, we have a track. So, this the distances uh, from one station to the next which are our assumption um, is that this track shows stations which are connected directly by a track, they are adjacent to each other, there is nothing in between that was the assumption in the schema, we stated that also we discussed it. It turns out that this query, I, I, how, how did this query get in? In fact, uh, if you think about it, this is not an easy query, why is it not an easy query? You can find out stations which are adjacent to, assuming this track only has adjacent immediately next station not two stations away and so on. It is easy to find stations which are next to Mumbai which are within a distance of 20 kilometers, but what if this is actually the situation in Mumbai I mean there is no station called Mumbai, but let us say there is Mumbai central if you wish. Now, within 20 kilometers of Mumbai central, there are a lot of stations. There is a station every 3 or 4 kilometers from Mumbai central. So, there are 4 or 5 stations in there. Now, how do I find out which all stations are within 20 kilometers? How do I find the distance of an arbitrary station? Let us uh, say, I do not know, Borivili. How do I know how far from Mumbai central Borivili is? Does this give me information? How will I find it? Hmm? From track? How, how do I find it from track? 
if if track only has adjacent edges, you know, this is Mumbai Central, let's call this uh, S1, S2, and then there is Borivali. So maybe this is 5, this is 3, this is the distance, and that is 9, maybe. Now, Borivali is within 20, but hmm? the single track doesn't have 20. Okay, now let us. Uh, but, uh, how do we know the actual distance of Borivali to the, we have to add up these things. Hmm? Some aggregate. Unfortunately, this is not so easy. This, how far do you, how many links do you go? Okay. So, if you uh, write a query like this, select, um, you know, what is track, station code 2. ST code 2 from track where ST code 1, uh, well, we can say track, uh, comma, uh, station, since we are using the name, uh, station code, uh, no. uh, yeah, sorry, ST code, this they are anyway separate, 1 and ST code. So, okay, we do not need to qualify them. ST code 1 equals ST code and uh, name equals Mumbai, okay, or Mumbai Central if you wish, okay. So, this will tell us all stations which are directly linked to Mumbai. Now, how do I find a station which is linked by two links? So, this one is two steps. So, this will give me S1 and I can get the distance also, ST code 2 comma distance. So, the, I get the distance. Now, how can I get a station which is two hops away? We can find things which are two hops away by doing another join. So, what we will do is we will join track with itself. Okay. So, let us call this track 1, uh, sorry, we can call it track 1, we have to rename it. Um, so, station comma track T1 comma track T2 and let us say this is T1 dot ST code 1 equal to, okay. So, there are two copies of track. So, what this will give me is if I <coughs> select T1 dot ST code 2 and T1 dot distance, that will give me things which are immediately adjacent. But there is a track T2 also which I can use. So, what I am going to do is T2 dot ST code 1 equals T1 dot ST code 2. That will what I have done is uh, T1 dot SC code 1 is, um, you know, the station code for Mumbai um, and the other end of the track is the first end of T2 dot track and the other end of T2 dot uh, is uh, what I am going to use here. Um, T2 dot ST code 2 is, is this, I will get S2 and any other thing which is within 2. What about the distance? The distance will have to be I have to add up the distances, T1 dot distance plus T2 dot distance, okay. So, to get stations 2 away, I had to take 2 copies of track and join them. If I want to get 3 away, I will get 3 copies and continue this. I can repeat this structure however many times I need to get stations which are that much distance away, in not distance, that many hops away. If I want to get things which are an arbitrary number of ups, you know, what do I do? Given any single SQL query like this, depending on how many copies of track I have there, I am limited in how many hops I can go. So, it turns out the query as stated here is actually uh, very hard to answer because it requires uh, what is called the transitive closure operation if you, because the query does not specify the number of hops. So, there is a 
all stations which are in a range of 20 kilometers, you know, for all I know, there may be a station every one meter. <laughs> of course, not realistic, but if I don't know anything about the railway system, I, there may be one every meter, and then I have 20,000 <laughs> such things, <laughs> joints which I have to do. Uh, in Mumbai, they are not quite one meter, but uh, I think within two kilometers is not at all uncommon, two, three kilometers. So, we may have even seven things in between. So, we will need a seven way join here, which is of course very boring to write such long queries. Yeah. So, there is a solution. Uh, SQL actually supports recursive queries. PLSQL. So, you have two options. One is uh, instead of writing a query like this, you can uh, write a loop in uh, Java or PLSQL. Okay. So, the sol so, what we can do though is instead of asking you to solve that, we can always update the assignment. Okay, I'll. So maybe what was intended here was, uh, I think the problem is the whoever the TA who inserted this question assumed that the track relation included all station pairs, not just uh, immediately adjacent ones, which is why the query was written that way. But we have made it clear elsewhere that the track is only adjacent one. So we'll modify the query which says. So, now if you assume this is the question, let us see if the solution provided by the TA matches this. Now, we are we will change the assignment. The database itself is okay. That is a not an unreasonable one. The queries have to be changed. So, I have already changed this query. Um, the solution to it uh, was the first one I gave without doing the extra join. So, we will put the solution in. I uh, will just delete this. I, I, I have no clue what it is doing. Uh, so, this is looking for station not equal to Mumbai and track distance. So, this solution was intended to be things which are adjacent away on the from the track. Now, what is the other thing doing? I am not very sure. Uh, I think this we made an assumption that uh, if you have a track from uh, A to B, there will also be a track from B to A. There will be two, two rows in the database. This query this does not make that assumption. It is assuming that you may have this or you may have that. And it Whichever one is there, it will work. That is the intention of the query. But obviously, if you do not have both pairs, that is, if you have two pairs of stations, we have stated already in the schema that we will have both pairs. If there is a track from A to B, we will have A B distance 10, we will also have B A distance 10. And the goal of that was to simplify query, so that we do not have to go through all this pain. Okay. Uh, let me uh, just delete that whole thing for the moment and we will add the correct one later. I suspect the remaining queries are also very complicated for exactly the same reason. That assumption of symmetry was not made in the queries. So, the TS had a hard time writing the query. I think the query is correct if you assume symmetry is not there, but it is unnecessary and we did not intend you to write such complex queries. Therefore, uh, I think we can safely, well, let us see what is the query. I will delete it in just a moment. Uh, find ID of trains which cover Mumbai, Thane and Ambarnath. Okay. So, what does it mean to cover? This go through these things. Um, whether they stop or not is another question. So, maybe it is better to interpret this as cover meaning that they should stop. Okay. Otherwise, it is not very useful if it just goes through the station. So, let us interpret this as uh, stop, which uh, go through all the stations and stop it.
Okay. So, this is a not such a hard query, uh, but it is a little lengthy. Now, let us see if the how would you do this. So, you need a train, we have the train halts relation. So, we can check with that train halts relation if it halts at a particular station easily with a given name. So, what we will need is let us see if this query is it's badly formatted. Uh, let us go back to display and see what that solution is giving. Um, so, this could be a good example of a complex little more complex query. We have seen the width clause. Right? So, this is a query uh, where the width clause may be used. So, what we will do for the December workshop is give hints on how to write this query. Instead of just giving a query like this and say solve it, we will add hints to help people structure their answer and then they would have learned how to write a more complex query. Okay, so, T is uh, just please note this uh, if we will modify this query. Okay, so, what we want is a train which uh, halts at those three stations. Um, which requires us to uh, join um, the train halts, train and station code. Now, we have to do the same thing three times, once for Mumbai, one for Ambarnath, one for Thani. Now, if instead of writing the join uh, so many times, it is a lot easier if we do the following, train halts, comma station. where um, train halts dot st code equals station dot st code. So, this is a halt for that station um, and we are going to get the name, but we still have to make sure it halts and time in not equal to time out. Okay, so, this is going to give me all pairs of train ID and station name where the train actually stops at that station. Is this clear? And we have done the join with station here. So, that is the width clause. And now, what do we want? Select. So, from we will come to what is selected. We are going to have train halts three times train halts uh, th1 train halts, train halts 2 and train halts th3, where now we want all of them to be in the uh, correspond to the same train. This is just one train which has to go through all. So, th1 dot id equals th2 dot id and can you read the thing at the bottom? <coughs> and th2 dot id equals th3 dot id. So, we have forced all of these to be from the same train. What we wanted is one at Mumbai, one at Ambarnath, one at Thani or whatever that was. So, and th1 dot station name equals Mumbai and uh, you can obviously fill in the rest, the other ones are for the other two and th2 dot station name equals Thani. Hmm? Sorry? And similarly, blah blah equals whatever that last one was. Ambarma. Is this clear? Are there other ways of writing this query? Anyone wrote this query in any other way? You could of course have not used this and done all you know there are uh, there is a pair of joints. So, you could have had six things here similarly e each of these would have been replaced by the join and then this condition and this condition all through. So, you would get a very big query as a result. Whereas, this is much easier to understand. Actually, the first uh, this query is basically without the width clause, it is doing something very similar. Instead of a join, it is doing a something in something else, but this is the first copy 
as a temp. Uh, this is the second copy. So, one was for Mumbai, one was for Thani and the third one was for Ambarnath and then it makes sure that the IDs of the trains are the same. So, this query is correct. It is just that if you use a with clause to write it, it is a lot easier to understand what is going on than that one. Find the names of trains which are covering Thani before the sixth stop. So, there how do you know which stop it is? The sequence number uh, does the sequence number give the stop? It does not, it just tells you what it is going through. So, now <laughs> finding the sixth stop over there is actually not going to be easy. I do not think this query was also, uh, it, uh, does it actually do that? No, it is just assuming sequence number less than 6. So, the English formulation was again messed up. Okay. So, if you actually want to find out if it stops, the sequence number is meaningless. The first stop may be sequence number 25 for all we know. Okay. So, for a Rajdhani Express that is probably true, <laughs> it is the first halt will be way high. So, the solution, one solution to this problem is to change it, but uh, I, I will not work out the detail. What if you did want the sixth stop? If you wanted to solve the problem as stated, how would you do it? I can get two copies of train halts, join them for the same train where the uh, sequence number of the first one is less than the sequence number of the second one. So, these are all pairs of train halts for the same train where the first one is before the second and the first one is actually a halt. Now, if I group by train ID sequence number for the second one and count how many there are, I can find out how many halts there are before this sequence number. If you do not understand what I am saying, pardon me, uh, maybe we will come back to this later. I do not want to get stuck on this because of one more set of. Again, let us not say covering. Uh, do we want pass through or stop at? Stop at Thani. Okay. Is that a reasonable phrasing? Is that clear? Which pass, uh, sorry, which pass through or stop at Thani before the sixth station in the route of the train. If you go back here, yeah. so this query matches the reformulated one. What is it doing? Uh, select uh, distinct name. Now, distinct is important because uh, well, let, let's see if it matters. So, what we want is train halt, train train halts, where train ID equal to train halt. So, this is simply to get the name of the train, and the train halt sequence number is less than six, and uh, the code is basically Thane's code. So, this is the station is Thane. It is on the route of this train. It and its sequence is less than six. So, this query answers the previous one correctly. Uh, the not the previous one. The new phrasing of the question matches this solution. Okay, so that ends uh, the first assignment. Now let's hmm, let's get to that. The third one is find the ID. Yeah. So let's get to the solution here. It is saved. Yes. Yeah. So, what will happen here is without the distinct. Yes. Yeah, you are right. So, let us modify that. So, the point is if that person taught many courses in CS, the ID and the name will occur that many times. So, if you want to avoid that. Um, here, yeah, 
we could. Yeah, that is a general tip. If the query is becoming very long, so uh, you can always give short names T I C and then use the alias here. Good. Any other comments on the solutions? Okay. Now, let us move on to the second assignment. Okay. What I thought was the easier lab turns out unintentionally to have been maybe the harder lab, unless this one is even harder. <laughs> okay. Find the maximum number of teachers for any course section. Uh, how do you do that? First of all, how do you know how many teachers are there for a course section? section uh, there is a teacher's relation, which has the section and the ID of the teacher. So, how do I find how many teachers are there for a particular section, group by the section's primary key count of uh, id. So, that will give me how many teachers are there for each section. What is this query? It wants to find the maximum number across all things. Now, how do I do that? So, a simple query will give me the num a simple group by query gives me a number of teachers for each section. So, one way is to uh, say where this is greater than or equal to all again of the same thing that is one way uh, or equivalently we could use we can just take the max of that. Max so, since we just want the number uh, max is good. In fact, teachers already has course ID. Yes, okay, so, there is no reason to join with course. If you see here, it is not doing anything useful. Teachers has ID, teachers has course ID. So, why join with course? So, we will remove that. I think we need Usually, it is done to reflect the fact that uh, foreign key constraint, it's making sure no that it, that course exists. So, that uh, is that is what some of the database literature says. Uh, in this particular case, there is it, the teachers because it has a foreign key to course, the course will exist. It will not make any difference at all here. Luckily, it will not make any difference. It does not modify the count. In general, if you do a join, it could mess up the count also. But you do not want to unnecessarily join with no particular goal here. So, you just want um, select count ID. So, we do not even need to know which course that was. All we need is the number of uh, teachers for each course section. Um, again, did, did it say course or section? It said section. So, group by is also wrong. So, not for a course. If it was for a course, this is okay. Course sections primary key is what? It is course ID, section ID, semester, year. So, that will give me the number of teachers for that section. But I think Alice we have tried as well. When we run it, it was not working. Which one? When we run it, it was not working. At last, we have to add some as something. Alice. Uh, yeah, as L. Oh, over here. Okay. Uh, you as want L. Say, give it a name. As L. As uh, L. T2. T. No, no, no. T2. Anything. It's good. As good. any name. Good. Yeah. So, uh, I think there is some uh, requirement in PostgreSQL that if you just have. Uh, Alice we need sub query like this, it should be given an alias. Otherwise, it does not have any name. It could have used an internal name. Uh, I do not think the SQL standard requires this, but uh, PostgreSQL has this limitation. I mean, it does not cost anything to add as t to that. So, this sub query from that we are just selecting max t there. Okay. So, this is clean. Let us go to the second query. Find all departments that have the minimum number of instructors using a sub query. Uh, order the result by department name uh, in descending order. So, how do we know which have the minimum number? Want, this time we do not want just the number, we want to find the departments. 
So, I have created a view first and then. Yeah, so uh, there are several ways of doing it. You could create use a width class. We, we have a similar query in the yes. book, um, slides also. And then you use a width class to structure this. Or you can um, just repeat the whole thing, it is more clumsy. Now, what is the solution given here? Uh, uh, that is not working. What? It is not working. No, no, no. This is completely wrong. This wrong. Is very that is not working. In fact. It is the answer is wrong. Is completely wrong. I, what is this doing at all? This is finding the oh, what is it doing? Something it's finding the number of instructors in each department. Yes, yes. It's wrong. So far, so good. But after that, it just um, simply orders descending. them, and that's it. Whereas working. the query clearly said, yes, only find those which have the minimum number of instructors. Not even doing minimum. What is going on? I think I need to fire all my TAs, get a new set of TAs or, or roast them or do something. <laughs> there are too many mistakes here. Okay. And I should fire myself also for not cross checking all the answers before coming here. Um, anyway, so. You are with view in some. Width. So, how would you do it? You would use a width class would help a lot. Mm. So, first of all, we for each department we need to know the number of instructors. So, we can say with uh, dip count or something like that, uh, department name, number also, num instructors, number as select, as select, department name, department name, count star, comma, count, from instructor, star, from Instructor. Instructor. Group by department name. Group by. Well, close. That's all. But as they say, close but no cigars. This is missing out one special case. What if a department doesn't have any instructor? What is going to happen? This is, we, we have. To, whenever you write a query, we have to watch out for this one special case. It, it if it does not have an instructor, the department will not appear here at all. So, then if we find the minimum on this, the department will not appear. So, if a department is 0, that is the minimum, Zero should be there. but huh? it would not help. It would not help. So, what we can do here, how do we ensure that we get a count of 0? There are several possible solutions. The simplest solution to make sure every department appears is to use department, um, we can say natural left outer join. Space here, Next space. Group by department name does not change. Now, the one other thing is if I do count star, if a department does not have an instructor, count star would be 1, it would not be 0, because count star will always, uh, you know, there is one tuple, but what distinguishes this from the other things is that the instructor ID would be null. So, if I want to know how many instructors there are in the department, instead of count star, I can do count ID. 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 Uh, yeah, there is only we do not have to uh, make it unambiguous, it is unambiguous, count id. Uh, and will the instructor get duplicated? No. Instructors are only in one department and it will just match here. Exactly, uh, this is the number of instructors for a department. Except for if a department has no instructor, instructor id would be null. Count of any attribute like this eliminates null before giving the count, therefore it would be 0. As an alternative, we could write a subquery which finds the count. That is the other. Bo both are there in the book. They are described. Uh, you can go look it up later. So, that is an alternative. But this one gives us the correct count. So, now with this, the rest of your query would be the same. Please. Um, so, what is the rest of the query? Select department name. Yeah. Select department name. 
select department name and uh, department name and uh, what is that number or what uh, hmm? second num instructor yeah num instructor from department count dpt count mm, we need to find the min yeah where num where uh, that num instructor equal to yeah equal to uh, yeah. select min num yeah. select min yes min min instructor instru yeah from the same uh, department count yeah from dept count, count. order by so order by is for this yeah. one. that one is over order by order by uh, department name name descent good is this query clear okay um ts please note this query so we can enter it later okay uh, so, we are still on query 2 out of how many more queries? We have almost 8 more queries and the descriptions are becoming longer and longer. <laughs> I think this assignment was probably a 5 hour assignment at minimum. So, again we will cut down uh, the questions. I think we told you this was optional. Okay? Uh, we said it is part of the December lab, but I think we will <coughs> remove this. So, you will not have more than 6 questions for the December lab. Okay. So, now what is the next one? For each student compute the total credits they have successfully computed. This query is actually directly there in the book yeah, yeah. if you want to look it, it up. It is easy. Um, and it says do not use the total credits attributes of student. That is a materialized view of some kind, which can be computed from the underlying relations, but it does not actually match in the book schema, I mean book example schema uh, data rather, the number does not match. Uh, so, we could run this query. How would you do this? How do you compute the total credits? We have to see which courses they have taken and completed successfully, meaning the grade is not null and it is not f. So, which, so the takes relation will tell us which students have taken which course and the grade. We can eliminate from there grades, uh, rows where the grade is null or f. So, that gives us students who have passed a certain course, but we do not have the credits there, whereas we need the total credits. So, where do we get the credits from? Course. So, we have to join takes with the course relation. The course relation has the credits. So, we have to join it and then for each student we need the total credit. So, what do we do? Group by sum student ID and sum of credits. Course comma. So, that will be the query. Let us hope this one is correct here. Yeah, that is um, working. That is fine. Uh, that is working. That? No, it should have been but, uh, not ID, not uh, name. Null also. Uh, yeah, the null Not part equal to null missing. that also did the thing yeah for each student so we can interpret student as uh, show the id rather than the name so let's correct that okay. from takes join student dot course where grade not equal to f and not equal to and of course text group. dot course id is course dot course id student dot id group by id and, uh, we actually don't actually need to join with student here unless we want the name so if you want the name we join with students otherwise uh, otherwise it's not required takes um, itself so we can takes is enough it has the id so, since the query did not, uh, well we can interpret the query as we want the name also. Okay, that is better. In which case, but then we have to do one more thing. If we output name here, 
the the query is not quite right yet. We need a one more change. What is it? Group by ID, comma name. Yeah, the group any attribute which appears here also Should has to name. appear in the group by list, right. unless it's aggregated. So name, name. ID, comma. Name. Uh, some SQL implementations will actually let you get away with this because some course from Srinivasan. How do you do this? We have to figure out who took a course taught by Srinivasan. How do you do that? Find out all courses taught by Srinivasan. Yeah. So, how do you do that? The Srinivasan is in the instructor name. Yeah. So, we have to join that with teachers on instructor ID. Then Select distinct course IDs. That is all. Now, you go for students and if it is taken courses equal to sum. Um, equal to any of this set. So, you could do that. Uh, so, you can find students whose ID uh, from takes actually uh, we need takes also. Takes and so teachers. takes the section has to match the teachers section and then from that we get the student ID. So, we can actually just do a join of instructor teachers takes and from that we can get the um, student IDs. Then we need to know the number of students. So, on top of that we can do a count distinct ID. Distinct and count star. So, yeah, here yes. we um, Select count distinct takes dot ID from, so Sorry. the join is instructor takes teaches, takes course ID equal, actually this part is wrong. Uh, it is not just um, course takes course ID, because Srinivasan may have taught the course once and uh, somebody else, Ram may have taught the course another time. If you look at only the course ID, you think that this student has been taught by Srinivasan. But Srinivasan taught it in 2009, this student took it in 2010 when Ram taught it. Okay? So, the join of teachers and takes should cannot be just on course ID. Did you get the point? What does the join have to be on? It is on the section. It should be the same section. The student took a section taught by Srinivasan. So, what is the primary key of section? How do you know uh, the section from teachers is the same as the section from takes? We need more things here. Uh, we want um, and uh, takes dot uh, sec, what, what is it? Sec ID, is it? Equals and takes dot semester equals Okay, teachers dot id equal to instructor id, instructor name is Srinivasan. So, that completes that query. Okay, so, again for December, I think we will give some simpler queries also. All these queries are hard. <coughs> they are hard as evidenced by the fact that um, several of our own students have goofed up on the answer. <laughs> um, so, we better make it a bit simpler than this. We, we will give some simple queries to start with and a few of these will be retained as harder queries, but with some hints so that uh, it will help the people to solve it. So, we will make all these queries and the solutions available to you before the workshop. So, you can go over it, give your comments. If you feel something is too difficult or it is not clear what is going on, please give us your feedback. So, before the workshop we have something which everybody here is comfortable with. Okay? That should be our goal. Before the workshop, you should know the solutions for all of these, including alternative solutions. You should be comfortable with it, because you will be acting as TAs, uh, not TAs. You will be the teachers for the um, uh, lab sessions in that part. Uh, we will not even know what is going on. We are, we are not going to be involved. You are the boss for these sessions. <laughs> that is one possible <laughs> solution. Okay, let us wrap up in a few minutes. Um, we are 
behind time. <coughs> Names of instructors who get the highest salary in their department. Uh, how do you answer this? I think this should be hopefully simple enough. Um, 60 stuff, I think. <coughs> yeah. So, this again you can do it different ways. Uh, so, this this sub query is finding for each department name what is the maximum salary in that department name among all instructors in that department. So, we do not need the department relation actually, we just need the instructor relation yes. group by department name and find the maximum salary and also we need the department name. Because the outer query is going to take instructors from that department whose salary equal to max salary. I have used uh, width function, I have used width and uh, made it. Yeah, you can do it. Yeah. But by the way, this has a small, th again there is a small error here yeah. uh, which we need to fix. This assumes that max salary is called max, uh, which is not quite right. Uh, where did that go? Either we should um, give this a name outside or give it a name here. Okay. So, let us call it max cell and okay. if you just did i 2 dot max, what is that? that there is no column called i 2 dot max, unless PostgreSQL happened to call that column max, but there is no guarantee what any database will call it. If you just say max of salary, it can give it any name, some internal name it gives. So And the last one for the day, we are not going to cover these today. <laughs> 60 is tough. So, now this one is uh, find students who have taken all courses taken by. Um, in relational like algebra, it is easy, but oh? here. In relational algebra, it is easy, but here. Yeah, uh, you can just put in the division yeah, operation. Simple. And you are done. But here I tried and just. Uh, <laughs> so, again, um, if you have access to the book. There is an example, uh, even the slides uh, it is there, which shows how to express the division operator, the for all operator using SQL query. So, it is there in the slide. So, you can take that and map it to this slightly different thing. Um, so, in general, how do you do this? <coughs> Any, uh, this is like a for all query. For all courses start by, uh, in this case, it should, should we call it courses or we have to first interpret this correctly. Do we want them to have been taught by Srinivasan or if Srinivasan has taught a course, these people should have taken that course, Some does not matter who taught the course. So, there is a, some English ambiguity here. So, we have to first rewrite this to make it unambiguous. What do you think this means? Does this mean they have, it could mean that Srinivasan taught 101, this student should have taken 101. That is probably what it if you literally read it, uh, if you say course, then you could say 101. If you say course section, it has to be actually that taught by uh, Srinivasan. So, uh, let us match the query to the answer. Mm, what does this answer do? Uh, what the hell is this answer? Yeah. So, this one is uh, ignoring the section aspect. That is easier also, we ignore the section. So, um, we will update this to make it unambiguous. So, we, they should have just taken the course, if at all it was taught by Srinivasan. So, how do we do that? Uh, it is always an except. So, first find the courses uh, which were taught by Srinivasan, take the courses taken by this student and do an except. So, if there is a course taught by Srinivasan which this student did not take, then this will be non empty, the, the difference will be non empty and that will be the uh, condition here. Um, so, we let us look at this here. So, we, the outer one is takes with well the join with student over here is simply because we want if we want the name otherwise that is not required. But look at this not exists part. It says not exists. Uh, Let us take the first part. Right. So, this one 
is finding all courses taught by Srinivasan. The I, again, I think there is a redundant join here. Uh, we can simplify it. Let's go down. So, teachers and instructor is required. The join with course is redundant. Okay, so, now a little simpler. So, can you read this? There is no course dot course ID. That would also be course ID from teachers instructor, where instructor ID equal to teachers ID. Instructor name is Srinivasan. So, this is giving us all courses that Srinivasan has taught. Now, we are going to remove from this all courses taken by this student, this guy. So, how do we find out what all courses the student has taken? Um, again, this course is redundant. I want to remove that. Okay. So, what is this query doing? Select course ID from takes where um, takes t where s dot id s is uh, this outer one. This takes. Uh, actually, we do not even need s dot id, uh, we can do student dot id, where student dot id equal to p dot id. So, for this particular student, it is getting us all the courses which that student has taken. So, now if we remove from all the courses that Srinivasan has taught, we remove all the courses the student has taken. If the student has actually taken every one of those courses, the result will be empty. If the student missed even one course, it is going to be there in the list. So, the out condition here is not exists. Not exists means it is empty. If it is empty, the student has taken every course. Therefore, they should be in the output. So, that is what we do here uh, and that query is now correct. Any questions about this query? The outer one is joining takes and student to get the ID and name and the inner one is the sub query is the standard form for um, the division operator or the for all operation. You take the full set, remove another set and check that the result is not empty. And note also that the second set here would normally have a condition from the outer one. This condition would come from the outer correlation. So, the inner one is being done only for specifically the one outer tuple we are considering at any point of time. So, we will do this for each outer tuple one at a time.